What happens when stresses in a design surpass acceptable limits? A typical response is to add more material to it to increase its load carrying capacity. However, this method does not always prove successful and in certain scenarios, it's better to do the opposite. For example, this conceptual model of a centrifuge part is experiencing high stress around some of its openings. A plot with principal stress arrows shows the main stress component operates in the circumferential direction and that stress concentrations are caused by the redirection of stress flow. By increasing the number of holes in the model from 12 to 34, the von Mises stress is reduced by 33%, resulting in a lighter structure with better throughput. Another way to reduce stress concentrations in a structure is to use large fillet radii. However, using this method is not always possible, as the added material can interfere with other regions of a design. In these instances, a design called an undercut can be used. Like our first example, this method also calls for the removal of material. Let's compare three figures to see the benefits of this design. Here, we see no alterations made to the design's radius, giving it a stress concentration factor of 1.91. By modifying the fillet's radius size by adding extra material, the stress concentration decreases to 1.67. This last design uses the undercut method, which gives the same reduction in stress without extending the thickened region. Engineering intuition guided the design changes in these two examples. But when optimizing real-world products and processes that involve multi-physics phenomena, it's best to use methods such as shape, topology, and parameter optimization. If you give them a try, you might observe that they also require the removal of material for minimizing stresses in a design, such as the topology optimization example shown here.